I feel like it probably is worth noting the like, yeah, the new sub the Digron card game is finally completely out now. And uh yeah, the big secret rare of the set is freaking Rena, like the tamer, the the Vimon girl, Vidramon girl. Oh right, her. Yeah. And the other big secret rare of the set is the final boss of Digimon World 3. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, like, we're finally getting Venmon representation in, like, the card game. Which is nuts, because this is a Digimon line that's exclusive to this one specific game, and has not shown up in, like, anything else since. It's, it's just Digimon World 3. It's just this one specific thing. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Like, the big gimmick of the archetype, because, yeah, of course they all work together as an archetype, is, like, really neat, too, where it's, like, basically you, like, you have a bunch of effects that allow you to add Venmon to evolution sources and stuff, and you, like, gather up all the Venmon to fuse together as you, like, evolve up into Galacticmon, and once you get to him... You basically are able to, like, shed Vinmon as, like, shields for either removal effects, which work on any type of removal, or to give it, like, blocker for free that just repeats as many times as needed as long as you have Vinmon, and you just sit back as you, like, just burn away the opponent's security one at a time. You know, with effects and stuff, and just, like, just rush them when possible. Like, it's a really weird, cool playstyle. I honestly dig it a lot. And the one interesting thing is that it's, like, as someone mentioned, this is either going to be the best against blue decks, or it's going to be terrible. Because the big gimmick of a lot of blue decks is they, like, shed your evolution sources... And they get bonus bonus effects off of that. So either you're going to be able to blast through all of them and make it have no protection. Or you're going to struggle to get through like 9 evolution source of Venmon. And you know it'll just completely shut down your game plan. It feels like there's no in between. It's either one or the other. So yeah that should be interesting. Like this... This whole set calf kind of feels like it calf kind of feels like if the D Reapers were like a more normal card system to play. <laughs> and not like the weirdo like send out a Digitama that can't be destroyed and it just gains counters each turn mechanic. So yeah, that's something. That's definitely interesting. <laughs> And yeah, because they're doing a whole thing where, like, you know, this set, they include some cards from the last set. That, actually, that at least makes me think that it's like, okay, next set, there's, like, a very, like, real non-zero chance that, like, once they've kind of tested the wires with this thing, they're finally going to give us freaking Lord Megadeth. <laughs> because you have to include him as a tamer card. But what the heck he's going to do, I have no freaking idea. But yeah, that should be interesting. Yeah, I feel like they've probably got stuff they can do with that. I'm kind of hoping that, like, they somehow manage to replicate Galacticmon's big move in the game, where, like, you know... When you fight him, his first big opening move is to steal the, like, strongest technique of the Digimon you're using, and then use it against you. <laughs> yeah, I forget if I mentioned this, but it was, like, the big deal behind why I had to beat the game with my Otismon. Because he stole a dark technique, and it's like, oh, well... Only one thing on my team is strong against Dark. It's let's go, my Otismon, let's save the planet. Uh, but yeah. Should we just get into the episode then?
Yeah, sure. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so, yeah. Digimon Frontier, episode 37? Yeah, 37. Yeah, 37. Holy crap, we've got a lot of Royal Knights to deal with after this one. <laughs> this is like, from 38 to 51, I would assume. Yeah. That's at least 12 yeah. episodes of just Royal Knights. This is gonna be a mess. Yeah, not all the way up to the end of the series, because a few episodes that are solely dedicated to fighting Lucid Blood. Yeah, but it's like a good chunk of them. Yeah. That's the thing, it's like, even Chirubon held out for like a really long time, but I feel like, you know, like, Ice Devimon aside, this feels like, you know, the appropriate time to spend with this character before, like, finally beating him. So that's the thing, it's like, I feel like we're going to complain about Digimon Frontier a lot after this point, but this is a pretty good episode. This this is a good way to finish off your final boss of the arc. Yeah, this is fine. Yeah. Here's the thing, it's like, ultimately, as far as the actual plot, there's not much to talk about. This is just like... You know, the heroes fight Cherubimon, and they just have one really big, really cool fight scene. And they realize, oh yeah, if we, like, attack the head where he's storing all this data, then, yo, know, we can, like, probably finish him off for good. And they, like, beat him, and they, they do the thing. Yeah, that's pretty much the episode. There's not that, yeah. a whole lot to actually talk about, because 90% of it is fighting. Yeah, like... It is worth knowing that Lucimon's plan, sorry, not Lucimon's plan, Trubizamon's plan had nothing to do with Lucimon seemingly that he was aware of. Like, yeah. as we'll learn later on, he was like manipulated by him. But his entire plan was just like, alright, I'm just gonna <laughs> gather a lot of data and then compress it so I can absorb all this power and become really strong. That That was his objective, seemingly. It's just power. It's just yeah. pure, straightforward power, which <sighs> doesn't explain how he knew what Mercurymon was saying or whatever behind his back, but screw it. You know, we're just gonna, like, leave that as a loose plot thread and we'll never come back to it. Yeah. Also, there's a nice little moment where Koji is like, alright, I'll go in front of you to block the shot so you can get in there and stab him in the head with your sword. Yeah, Takuya's, yeah. Takuya's like, but you can't do that, or like, my armor is stronger or something. And he's like, I'm not trying to be cool, it's just that physical attacks actually work on him. Yeah, I, I like that they have a bit where they stop and they like strategize about this. And he's like, oh yeah, you know what? You've got more defenses and bar like, you know, offensive power. And like, my attacks aren't that effective, so I'll just be your shield. And I'll just make this sacrifice. And yeah, it works and it's awesome. <laughs> also yeah. really like that it's like, you know... This entire fight, like, of course, Lucian gets stronger, and because of that, he becomes, like, huge and regenerates. Yeah. So it's like, Lucian has the data for all these various places in the world he's absorbed, and stuff that I have, True, which we yeah. saw a bit more of. Sorry, True. I'm guessing he's saying Lucimon by accident a lot, probably. It's fine. We're about to switch villains, anyways. <laughs> But yeah, Truvivon's absorbed all this various data from the, like, environment and from various parts of the world. So something I wish they played up more is that he's just, like, just reforming the data as parts of, like, just the digital world to throw at them. Like, there's a point where it just, like, he just forms an entire castle out of his head and just drops it on him. Yeah, yeah, that would have been neat if he was just summoning parts of the world that was destroyed to attack them with, but yeah. that's pretty much the only time he does it. It's such a good, like, moment, though. It's so cool. Because it's, of course, also, you know, he's like, oh, I just reabsorb this later, so who cares? Yeah. Also, is that the castle Seraphimon is in? No, right? I don't think so, but I would not be surprised. 
because the yeah, because after yeah, all the it does look ended so, there, they could have yeah. destroyed it. It does look familiar. It might have been the castle. <laughs> Uh, now you mention it, I'm just looking at this. It's like, is it? Maybe. Actually, I just assumed it was just a random castle, but you know what? Yeah. It would That's, make more yeah. sense if it was a castle we had seen before. Man, can you imagine if, like, more of this fight was just, like, Cherubimon throwing parts of the environment that he'd previously destroyed at the heroes, and you got to see, yo, know, like, say the, like, you know, Gatsumon village, or more, no, not the Gatsumon village, more of the, more of the things, the, like, the snail Digimon village with, like, the sideways homes on, like, part of the mountainside. Or, like, you know, other crazy things we've seen along the journey. Aw, <laughs> oh, that mm -hmm. would've been so good if that was, like, their recycled animation instead of the lightning bolts. Because the lightning bolts are fine, but this is, like, very, like, weird and new and distinct. And all they really have to do is they just have to take, like, existing background stills and just sort of, like, cut around an object to be like, hey, here's a thing we could just throw on the <clears throat> frame for Lucy for Cherubimon, not Lucymon, for Cherubimon <laughs> to toss at the heroes. Just hold out for a little longer. We're gonna switch to Lucymon soon. Oh man. <laughs> But yeah, before we like really like, I guess just move on too much. Uh, yeah, should we talk about how like they just pulled the Azumi ship with Takia out of nowhere? Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> yeah, it's like they had one interaction in, like episode two or something, and ever since then they've been pushing Junpei nonstop. And even when she's like, oh yeah, you win this talkie and we're gonna go on a date. And Junpei's in the background, like, looking really worked up and, like, you know, frustrated about it. Yeah. I don't think... I, I think it's just, like, before they go to fight, Izumi's like, oh, I'll go on a date with you, with one of you or whatever after, when you win or whatever. I think, like, th uh, th that moment when the little... <clears throat> like, dream sequence happens. Yeah. Like, I, I'm pretty sure that's all it is. He got knocked out and then had, like, a weird dream about that idea. Yeah, but it's, it's so weird they're pushing this now of all times. Just, I don't, like... I don't, I don't think they're pushing anything. I think it's you, you don't think this is like, pushing it? You don't think this no, is, I, like, pushing the ship? No. And talking yet, like, just... gets knocked out and he has a dream of himself, like, just laying his head on Azumi's lap. You you don't think that's chipping? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Alright. He got knocked out and he had a weird dream. Yeah, a dream of the specific girl in the group and him, like, just doing something vaguely romantic with her. <laughs> MP chat MC Chad versus Virgin side character. Jeez. Yeah, if they if they try to make this a thing, then holy crap, Junpei got robbed. He's been the strongest all along. He's carried this group so hard. <laughs> Junpei was right all along and we stand him. I do like that there's a moment where it's like they have to give their spirits up to fight. I think Koji is like, are you okay with that Junpei? He's like, whatever, you guys are the strongest here, go do it. Yeah, character development. I I guess that's the one thing where it's like, you know, you know, of course it's like, last time it's like, oh yeah, they should all be able to fuse into the thing and like swap control as they fight or whatever. And this is a point where it's like, you know what, yeah, no, this actually works for Junpei's arc specifically. I still wish the arc characters had something to do, but I mean, yeah, alright. It's honestly a Shippermon, and it's random as shit, oh yeah. It's so weird. Like, this this feels like it's meant to imply that, like, this was meant to be a thing all along, but really wasn't. <laughs> 
Like this this ship feels <clears throat> ice cold. It's so distant. <laughs> there's like there's nothing to it. There's it's so far off in the background. There's throwing stuff at the wall here. Junpei still being best character at least. Yeah. But yeah, at this point, if at this point, you know, when they beat Shrubibon, if this was just the end of the show, that would be fine. <laughs> We're at the exact point where it's like, okay, you know, this is where we start saying like, alright, when does this actually get bad? When does this actually become a problem? <laughs> It's like yeah, oh, because like yeah. even even though they defeat Troop One relatively easily, this would still be fine as the end. Yeah, like, this, okay. this would be a good finale of like, all right, you know what? We got new forms in the final boss powered up, and we did like a big rush and had a cool moment and maybe sacrificed a friend, but we did it and we made it out okay. Yeah. And, and now yeah, we gotta go get, through 20 like, episodes. Uh, now yeah. we gotta go through 20 episodes of the kids losing to the Royal Knights. Yeah. At this point, it's like, alright, everything here just wrap up. It's like, yeah, you get one episode where it's like, say they, like, ride the world, like, ride a trail mod across the world or more to restore it and, like, trial the world or whatever. And they, like, go back and just, you know, resolve their things. And you know what? That'd be, like, a nice, good, solid endpoint to was up to this point, the pretty solid, pretty good, reliable series. Then we see a shadow off in the distance. <laughs> oh, hey, what are these mysterious figures? Oh, I sure hope there's no trouble on the horizon. Jeez. I'm sure nothing wrong will happen at all. I'm sure nothing will go wrong at all. Still can't worry why they went this room stuff and cooling the knights earlier as well as they couldn't come while couldn't undercome while taking care of the mid cop boss. Yeah, it's like that's the thing. It's like all right, of course where this is going, we're gonna have to fight the royal knights for the rest of the series. There are more than two royal knights that you could throw at the heroes and have them deal with. Like, you could have, yeah. like, what, like, four or five of them or something. And you know what? Each of them gets, like, you know, like, an episode or two to sort of hang around and be evil and stuff and be a problem. And then we, like, fight them Which, and we let's... find a way to beat them. Which, let's be clear, usually the Royal Knights are good guys. So it's interesting when they're, like, I guess it's not usually. Yeah, you, you say some, that, but I feel like, they're like as a Cyber group, Sleuth. they're villains more often than not. Yeah, which is weird, because they're supposed to be, like, these good holy knights or whatever. Yeah, they're, like, we keep calling them the Royal Knights. I believe in, like, the original translations and stuff, they are supposed to be just straight up the holy knights. But it's like, oh, but what God is against the heroes, and we have to overcome God, and it's that whole GRPG thing. So it's like, every time they show up, they just sort of happen to be villains when there's, like, an organization. You know, except for when there's, like, other good royal knights to stop them. Yeah. Well, I think it's through, it's like, alright, like... Omnimon, consistently a good guy. Gallantmon, sure. Freaking Magdemon, alright, yeah. Lord Nightmon slash Crusadermon, is they're known in English. Yeah, mm -hmm. Crusadermon's always a villain. Like, every time. No exceptions. <laughs> also, uh, weirdly in this series, a dude. Yeah. Yeah, it's an art thing, because I guess... Yeah, should we just Lord talk Nightmon, about that right now? Yeah. I mean, there's nothing to talk about in the previous episode. We'll just jump to the next one. Yeah, screw it. I'll just put them both together. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Lord Nightmon, uh, in the dub is a, is a woman. 
And my other exposure to Lord Nightmon is in Cyber Sleuth, where she is also a woman. So it was yeah. kind of surprising when they show up and Lord Nightmon starts talking. And it's like, whoa, wait, what? Yeah, because it's like... And they're doing the flamboyant, like, rose yeah. glowing, like... Yeah, that That's kind of That's the thing, because I, yeah, I assumed that Cruceramon was like, yo... Like, as Didron don't feel, like, real, like, you know, genders or whatever, but let's just say, like, female, like, personified. But, yeah, it's like, because I do <clears throat> vaguely remember Cruceramon having, like, a female voice in the dub, and I went back to check, and, yeah, female voice actor. Because, you know, they're wearing pink armor, and they have all these ribbon weapons, and they're doing the rose thing and talking about beauty, so they just made them a woman. <laughs> Yeah. Also, as far as Digimon go, the way I look at it, what do they look like? If that's not a good indication, what do they sound like? Yeah. It's like, because of course it's like, oh, is Agumon like, does he look like a guy? And it's like, well, not really, but, you know, he sounds like a guy, so you know what, fair enough. Yeah. And I say, and like, I make the distinction of like, going through both of those, because Lucemon is very clearly voiced by a woman, but he's obviously a boy when you see his design. Yeah, I, I feel like Lucemon's meant to be a bit more androgynous than, like, yo. Know, because, yeah, I know it's like other forms look like, and they look male, but they also look very, you know, like, very, like, pretty boy, you know, like, you know, that whole, like, you know, thing. Like, they're very, like, not meant to be, like, super masculine. They're they're kind of androgynous. Kind of. More in the child <laughs> form than, like, the adult form, I think. I was gonna say, his adult form, he I'm pretty sure he's pretty ripped. Yeah, but still, right? Yeah, yeah, femboy evil man, exactly. Yeah, can tag is dependent on the situation. I very much have a lot of Greer good. If the heroes get in the way of that, then they're on the hit list. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the thing, because it's like, every time the Royal Knights appear, there's like, they're really strong, and there's a lot of them, so if they help the heroes, it would be too easy. They have to be villains. <laughs> Like, every time, they only show up to be either villains or unconnected to the group as a whole. Because if there are just, like, 13 heroic mega levels that were really strong and just out there doing things, then, like, the bad guy would not stand a chance. No, of course not. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, friggin' royal knights appear. <laughs> Uh, actually, we should probably talk about Hans before this a little bit, because there is a bit of interesting lore we get before this point. Yeah. Also, we talked about Lord Nightmon. I don't think we mentioned Dinosmon here. Yeah. Honestly, I like Dinosmon. Dinosmon's like, his proportions are wonky, but he's pretty cool. He seems yeah. like a pretty cool design. He seems like a pretty cool Digimon. I remember, like, getting him and Digimon World next order, and, like, the just how long his feet are weird the crap out of me, though. They're, like, way too long. It's super crazy. Uh, but yeah, before anything else, uh, everyone beats Cherubimon, and by everyone, I mean the two people that matter. And, oh, hey, then Barrowmon comes up, who in the dub, I believe, is just straight up called Baronmon. <laughs> Which, as I think you it's... can imagine, led to a lot of jokes in the Digimon World 3 playthrough. Ah. <laughs> uh, I think his name- I think it's- I think it's Boromon, by the way. Is it? Yeah. Which is- which is weird, considering the antagonist Digimon of Ghost Game this week. Yeah. Okay, yeah, in the dub, he's just straight up Baronmon, and, like, in the sub, he's Boromon. Oh, is it an A? Was I yeah. just... Yeah. I guess I was seeing it wrong. Yep. Yeah, he just shows up, and he's like, Oh, hey, I have a, I'm have going to kill you, except, hang on, I'm actually here to give you a prophecy for some reason. 
Well, I think he, at first he thought they were the be- like the enemy, and then like they all turned the Tin Warriors. He's like, oh, wait a minute, hold on. I'm yeah. not here to fight you. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. That makes sense. But yeah, and we learn the backstory of how, like, the Tin Warriors actually, like, defeat Lucimon, which we knew before, but now we get to actually see them. And here's the thing, we've been seeing them in the intro, it's so weirdly fascinating to me that they had these designs down, that they just had them ready to go before the show starts. I feel like every time, yo, you see a big group of heroes or whatever in, like, a, like, friggin' fantasy series, like, they're all shadowed out and, like, ambiguous, and, you know, they're, like, you know, do weird stuff to hide their identities, and this is, like, no, these are the Tin Warriors, this is what they look like, they're all identifiable Digimon that are, like, consistent with what they are now. Like, nothing has changed. We just had this down from, like, scene one. Mm. Let's look at this. It's like, yeah, that's ancient Troymon and, like, ancient Volcanomon stuff. Yeah, ancient Greymon. Yeah, I didn't even realize they're not even, um... Like, they're not the same Digimon as the protagonists, because they're, like, a later form. Yeah, yeah, these are, like, what they're meant to look like. It's yeah. like, I'm recognizing, you know, it's like, was like, ancient, uh, what the crap is it, the warm one, ancient, like, um, mermaid mon, I want to say, that's probably not it. I, that might, that sounds, I'm pretty sure that's a Digimon that exists, you might be right. Yeah, the middle one's ancient wizard mon, I believe, or ancient wise mon, yeah, I think it's ancient wise mon. Uh, I forget what the ice one is, and next to that, I believe we have the wind one. I actually, like, really, like, stopped to count this, and it's like, alright, we don't have all of them here. We have about seven, but I believe that, like, the others are in, like, the intro. Like, we just straight up see the silhouettes for, like, ancient Sphinxmon and stuff. So, yeah, they just straight up, like, got them just like that. The other big interesting thriller is that it's like, alright, you know, of course, like, the Ten Warriors showed up, they stopped Lucimon, they sealed him away in the dark area. So, do you remember where Takia was sent in episode one by Cerberus Mod? Uh, yes, the dark area. Yeah, yeah, it was the dark area. <laughs> we killed the warden <laughs> of the oh, most geez. powerful being in the universe <laughs> with the <a> freaking Agdemon. <laughs> what the actual heck, Digimon? <laughs> I I did not yeah, think I, that I, would I... even come back. <laughs> this is the dumbest now. <laughs> Yeah, because I was, I was thinking, like, Dark Area, this sounds familiar. Why does that sound familiar? And it's like, oh, right. Yeah, it's the, the, okay. So they just went to where Lucimon was uh, being They, they held just the went episode. to where he was being held. Or Takuya. And got Takuya no did. hints at it, and then they beat the thing that could send them to the... <laughs> it always goes back to Cerberus Spawn. <laughs> that... I cannot believe how dumb that's gotten over time. <laughs> Just holy crap. I I really want people to stop and think about the implications of this for a moment. <laughs> Jeez. If only we didn't kill Cerberus Mon, maybe we could go there right now and fight the final boss. Maybe Cerberus Mon could have stopped him or something. Man, it can... it is. Digimon loves to put uh, underpowered Digimon in charge of very important things. Like a Lekmon who takes care of the Digimon who were reborn, or who were trying to be reincarnated. Yeah, you'd think that'd be like a way bigger job. <laughs> yeah, you think they'd yeah. put a Mega to do that. Man. You know what? Random theory time. Like, random theory. 
Wolf Alekmon isn't like someone who is just tasked with that. Wolf, he's just one of the Digimon that was born there, and he's like, oh, well, being a rookie's convenient for this, so I'll just stay a rookie. I just mm. gotta take care of all the others. So it's like, maybe if Alekmon died, then one of the Ram Digimon, the primary village, would just evolve and be like, okay, I guess I have to take care of the babies now. I still can't see why any Digimon, like, if they're capable of evolving, I don't know why they wouldn't be Mega for that job, because it seems like a very good idea to be able to defend the babies. Yeah. I'm imagining, like, you know, Wolf, like... Because it's like, if he turns into, like, a Leomon or something, then, like, you know, maybe, like, <clears throat> being bigger would make it harder. Like, maybe he could accidentally hurt them or something, you know? Because it's like... Write the, or they could just write the character to, you know, not do that. Yeah. I think the point is that it's just like, oh, he's just this random nobody who just does the thing and you're not meant to think about it. It's... Unfortunately, I think about it. Yeah, unfortunately, we will all think about it. I like Electron. Yeah. He's, he, he's a little underpowered for such an important job. Man, like, remember back when we were talking about the episode on the podcast, and we were just kind of like, man, this is such a nothing baby episode? And that kind of ended up being one of the most important lore episodes in the adventure canon? Because it's like, yeah, this is how Digimon work, just straight up. Yeah. In pretty much every canon, this is how they work. Yeah, evolution seems to often be shown as something that happens with time. But I do wonder how much control Digimon have over it. Yeah, like, say you, like, Anna, say you, like, evolved into, uh, how do I make a joke out of this? Say you evolve into a Greymon, and you're like, oh man, holding things with two hands is the best, I don't want to lose this. And you start, like, going into an evolution, and you're like, oh no, I'm going to lose an arm. Can you, like, opt out of that? Can you just mash B to stop it? <laughs> is, is that how this works? I think... I feel like there's some... I'm thinking of, uh, what's it? The, uh, the mobile game. There was an Agumon who could evolve and de evolve at will without a partner. Although oh, I, I don't weird. think that, I don't think that concept comes up all that often, if ever, outside of that. I don't remember that. I do very distinctly remember that there is a village that is effing burned to the ground by Ice Devimon. <laughs> mm hmm and that will never not be funny to me. <laughs> also, yeah, of course, they threw in our female character who turned evil because she was traumatized or whatever the heck. Because, of course, every time. <laughs> Jeez, did she fall? Oh, wait. Wait, in the mobile game? Yeah, in the gotcha. Uh, who was it? I didn't play very far. It was, I think her name was Sarah? Yeah, she was like, you know, oh, okay. in the second season or something. Yeah, okay, she's a show, yeah. It's a character I never even got to. She just shows up with the Tapermon, and it's like, the group starts getting attacked by a wild Machine Dramon. And it turns out her Tapermon is the Machine Dramon. And she was like, oh, but I can't let you, like, interfere or I might lose Tapermon and this is all I have left. And you get a big sad backstory, which is honestly not a bad backstory, if I'm being real. Where she just kind of recounts how, you know, she had some kind of weird chronic illness as a kid, so she was stuck in a hospital bed all the time. And, like, her only friend was this effing Tapermon. So it's like, okay, yeah, that that's a nice backstory. Yeah, that makes sense. But it, it is also least... kind of just doing the thing. Yeah, but at least they established, like, the Digimon partner thing is, like, a close bond and everything. But, like, at least they yeah. established it even better. 
if, like, Sarah just shows up and the card game is, like, Machine Dramon support, I'd be into that. That would be pretty sick. I'm sure nobody <laughs> would really care, but you know what? I'd like it. <laughs> and depending on the series, they often beat our Digimon, take their day to get stronger. Yeah, yeah, guess our way is training in with time. Yeah, I assume in Frontier, it's like, in this series specifically... You beat other Digimon, and you, like, absorb things from the environment. Like, I assume it's like, oh, fruit just sort of, like, grows on a tree, and then you, like, eat the fruit, and you gain the data of the fruit, and that's how you get stronger if you can't kill anything. Mm. Partners seem to allow Digimon to skip ahead mostly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Tamer's just straight up, like, evolution costs energy, and the Tamer is the battery. <laughs> Pretty much, right? Yeah. Main region, yeah. Grack to Rookie after. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we get a big backstory on Lucimon, and we do get direct confirmation, just pretty much out of nowhere... That's like, oh yeah, also, like, Lucimon was the reason Trubimon went evil, and he, like, controlled his dark thoughts to, like, you know, warp him. Maybe not necessarily that, but he did corrupt him, and then let yeah. Trubimon just do what he was gonna do. Yeah, it's basically, like, Lucimon all along that, like, changed Trubimon, which honestly makes sense, because, you know, we saw the evil hands before... And it's like, okay, yeah. I guess that's what that was. And, like, you think about it, it's like, oh, so when Chiruimon was going around, you know, corrupting other Digimon, that was Lucimon's power. Just straight up. Yeah. And you know what? Yeah, that makes sense. That's, that's a good way to tie everything back to it being Lucimon all along. And if they don't directly say it, it's a good way to make this work. Yeah. So yeah, at this point, yeah. like, at this point, things are not really, <laughs> like, bad yet. This is a good backstory, this is a good build-up to a quote-unquote, like, real final villain. So far, this is pretty solid. Yeah, it's just that we already know how things are gonna go. It's just unfortunate how they handle everything up to the lucid one. Yeah. Just seeing the preview for the next episode, it's like, hey, yo, what? How can we filler out this arc? Oh, I know. Let's let's go to the moon and have space adventures. <laughs> well, if we go to the move and moon and we have to comedically find a way to build a rocket back to Earth. <laughs> Oh, we have to, there's so much filler in this high-stakes final arc to do. Sheesh, I forgot about the, the Starmon episode. Jeez. <laughs> if there is not a single Antilamon on the moon, I will be disappointed. <laughs> if there's not a single Lotmon on the moon... Hmm. <laughs> because there's gotta be, right? Kuvanor <laughs> Beach episode time zone for space instead, yeah. How screwed is it that we beat the big bad and then we introduced a new threat and then we go to space not to up the scales, but just for the sake of it. Just, just for a goofy for a like bit. yeah. Ah uh, jeez, but yeah. Everyone, like, you know, kind of figures out the lore, and they're like, okay, so essentially Lucimon was sealed away, and now he's, like, going to return, and the Royal Knights are stealing data to, like, speed up his return. And, yeah. And freaking Baronmon just straight up looks the group in the eye and says, oh yeah, also, you will fail, and the digital world is going to be destroyed. It's a prophecy, you can't stop this. It's fated to happen. So the heroes are all like, alright, well, we'll defy fate and beat those royal knights. And they fight the royal knights, and they're like, oh god, they're so strong, we can't defeat them. They all almost die, actually. Oh, yeah. Pretty much. 
Really, they the should human... be dead at this point. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, they're dead. Like, yeah, if a human takes enough damage, just like a Digimon, uh, they will expose their code, and I assume it's like one more hit and you're dead. Yeah, and meanwhile, yeah, after I take all this damage, freaking Dinosmon just uses Waver and Breath and either transforms or launches a giant purple flaming dragon at the group, including all the kids who are untransformed without spirits. And it's like, okay, these kids are dead. There's no way you can survive this. And they just, you know, cut things off on the Royal Knights being like, dang it, I can't believe you killed them. And that's the episode. Yeah, Lord Nightmind, like, he starts powering up for his big attack, and Lord Nightmind is like, what are you doing? Stop that. Yeah, you're gonna destroy everything around here. We need the data. Jeez. Yeah, I mean, of course they all survived, because there wouldn't be a series if they didn't. Just the idea that it's like, they power up this big final attack, and Lord Nightmon is angry. Not because it's too much, but because, like, no, you're gonna destroy the ground, though, you idiot. We need all <laughs> this dirt for Lucimon. You have to feed Lucimon dirt. We have to feed him so much dirt, there might not even be enough for this job. Jeez. I oh, yeah, really oh, hope we get also, new Lucimon cards in the card game soon. It's been so long. <laughs> also, Barrowmon uses, uh, uh, he uses his body to shield the kids, and even with that, it almost kills them. Yeah. I have to imagine Baramon shielding them with his body is just sort of like, it's like putting like a roll of wet toilet paper in front of like a stick of dynamite. I don't know, I think if he didn't do that it would have killed them outright. <laughs> like, it probably does something, but I can't imagine it does that much. It's like, yeah, no, if, if you put, like, a block of wood right in front of, like, someone, you know, like, a wall of, like, just drywall, and, like, a freaking atomic bomb goes off, I'm, I'm sure it's gonna help a little bit, but I don't know if it's gonna help that much. <laughs> Could have been our beach episode. <laughs> Man. Here's the thing, like, alright, so hear me out, right? You need to, like, we need to, like, yo, know, just push things out and be like, alright, we need filler. Why not do a Royal Knights Beach episode? Screw it. <laughs> Why not just make that happen? <laughs> of course they're all wearing armor, but, like, yo, know, just, like, yeah, I just want to see Crusadermon, Dasmon just hanging out, and they're just wearing swim trunks, too, for no reason. Just, yeah, just pull a Final Fantasy 7, give us Costa Del Sol. <laughs> They're like, alright, we get one day off, let's just enjoy it. And meanwhile, you know, the heroes just stumble across them. And Crusader Mon's like, hey, we're on break, shut up, go away. And that's the episode. <laughs> Friggin' Dynasmon is just chillin'. <laughs> Uh, he's playing volleyball with the fire dragon. Ah, <laughs> uh, jeez. Do, do we have anything else we really want to say about this one? Not really. Uh, uh should we talk about the foul a little bit? It's it's a fine fight. It's pretty solid. Um, uh, everyone's fight, hopelessly outmatched. But holy crap, that's the thing. It's like. I should probably mention, <laughs> yeah, I'd give them a sense of fear. yeah, you know what, I was saying like Final Fantasy Son, but I think Jujutsu Kaisen actually does do this with its villain group, like, it just has little, like, yeah, yeah, it's got little, like, end of episode skits that are just, like, just sometimes, you know, it's just, like, following the bad guys, just hanging out like a hot spring or whatever, and they're just, they're just chilling out, just being bros, and it's kinda great. 
There was like a point where one of the villains like nearly dies and he manages to escape as a head. And he's just like at the beach with the other bad guys in the big villain group. And they're all like giving him crap about it. <laughs> like they're all making jokes and stuff. Oh, man. I had to finish that show. That's a good series. <laughs> For in Jujutsu Kaisen. Man, it is worth knowing that, like, so far every major battle with a villain has ended with at least two or more main characters just surrounding them on all sides and just punching the living shit out of them and, like, a gloriously animated beatdown where the bad guy's just getting nailed with so much bullcrap they can't even do anything. And it's great. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, where the crap was I going with- Right, right. One thing I'm surprised about is that it's like- I was thinking, like, alright, how do you extend this to keep the filler interested? It's like, alright, well obviously, yo, like, first time you fight the Royal Knights, you don't have them use their final forms, right? Because then you have the question of, like, okay, can Kaiser Greymon actually fight them? I was thinking, like, okay, maybe they're gonna, like, not go all out, and maybe the next fight they're gonna, like, you know, maybe they have to save some people so they can only use one of them, and they have to hold the other one back or something, and that's how they're... No, they just, like, use both of them immediately, and it just doesn't work. It's just no good. So, crap, how are, this... how are they even gonna do this? Like, how can they even do this? I mean, we already know they spend, like, 20 episodes losing. Yeah, but, like, you have to vary that up somehow, right? It can't just be, like, 12 episodes straight of the exact same fight over and over. They have to, like, do something for this. I mean, they do. They, I'm pretty sure, like, I don't remember if the Gatsumon thing is, a. Uh is a example of what they do with it but like if it is then they might just go back to Digimon they met before and try to help them but they fail to help them because Royal Knights and that's just gonna be like every cheese uh. yep. yeah okay okay <laughs> I, I assume there's like nothing else we really need to say about this